For scars, for a just man will one die. Yet perhaps, for a good man, someone would dare to die. But God commended His charity towards us. Because when a shed, we were sinners, according to the time, Christ died for us. Much more, therefore, being now justified by His blood, shall we be saved from wrath through Him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more, being reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. Romans chapter 5, verse 7 to 10. St. Maximilian Kolbe, founder of the Militia Immaculate, or the Army of the Immaculate One, was a great devotee of the Sacred Heart, whose kingship he spread through print media and defended from the attacks of Freemasonry, Nazism, and Communism. St. Maximilian Kolbe was the great hero of the infamous Outwitch prison camp. St. Maximilian was one of the very few during his time who believed in the importance of Our Lady in fulfilling greater love for the Sacred Heart. Because of this, he launched the work of the Militia Immaculate for the cost of the Immaculate. In doing so, the theological and spiritual focus of St. Maximilian Kolbe's apostolic enterprise served to spread the kingship of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. His main monthly publication, The Night of the Immaculate, was circulated at 600,000 copies, and his daily newspaper was printed for one million. He and his priors printed books, magazines, pamphlets for people of different walks of life to promote the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In defense of the Catholic faith, the Church and the Pope, who was severely maligned, especially by the Freemasons. He died from lethal injection in the Outreach labor camp, months after his second arrest on February 17, 1941. He knew then that he would never return, so he entrusted his future to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, the King of Kings, and to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. While imprisoned in the labor camp, he offered his life in place of a man with a family name, Pranchisek Gayonishek. Like the sacred heart of Jesus, he served as an oblation so that others would live. The material object of the devotion of the sacred heart is the heart of Jesus. One day, exposing his breast, Jesus said to St. Margaret Mary, Behold this heart, which loves man so much and is so little love in return. It is the heart of the most holy and most loving, the most perfect of children of man. Formed by the Holy Spirit himself out of pure blood of the Virgin Mary. The Sacred Heart is the masterpiece of heaven and earth, of nature and grace. It is the heart of God, since it has been hypostatically united to the divinity. Hypostatic union means the combination of the divine and human natures in a single person of Christ. The Sacred Heart, therefore, is the sanctuary of all possible perfections and merits, an endless abyss of grace and benediction. The Sacred Heart is the heart of a God-man, the most wonderful union of all, that is most pure and most refined in human affections, with divine mercy and goodness. In this Sacred Heart, compassion is united to mercy, brotherly affection to fatherly love. In the Sacred Heart, we witness the depth of the riches of the mercy of God, the terrorist attack on New York's 
Twin Towers, the World Trade Center. On the ill-fated day of September 11, 2001, will always be remembered as one of the most tragic acts of violence against the United States. Clustered among seven buildings, the World Trade Center employs 50,000 office personnel from 90 countries. This terrorist attack revealed the brutality and ugliness of sin with its diabolical elements of unforgiveness, vengeance, and torture. On the other hand, it also showed the virtuous side of human beings, the heroic sacrifice of the people who helped rescue those who were trapped in the burning inferno. Catholics would call them martyrs, many would call them heroes, and the rest of the world would call them brave humanists. These courageous individuals risked and offered their lives as a sacrifice to save the lives of innocent victims. Several museums after tragedy exhibited the objects of disaster, the precious reminders of that ill-fated day. These artifacts gathered from the debris made visitors recall the hellish scenario, the chains and touch, the hearts of Americans and millions of people throughout the world. As they moved through the exhibit, viewers were greatly moved to tears while others describe the heroism of the firemen, police, volunteers, priests, pastors, nurses, doctors, and soldiers who offer their lives to save thousands of people. Visitors cried, while others stayed kneeling before these objects of disaster, close to venerating the objects because it brought back the painful and traumatic tragedy that everyone shared in losing a loved one. The director of the New York Historical Society was recorded to have said, from the start, curators realized that the objects of disasters we collected were special and powerful. These very humble objects constructed of humble materials became priceless. People's hands were shaking as they gave them to us. They were conduits to the event allowing people to personalize the experience. Another official of the same New York Historical Society agreed when he said, these objects had been touched by history. They have the power to speak to people because the artifacts witness the events and its aftermath. Again we say, the material object of the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus is the heart of Jesus Christ. Not only do we respect the Sacred Heart, we also adore it because we remember in the material object of His Sacred Heart what Jesus did to save us. Jesus endured all the persecutions, tortures, and again the crucifixion that should be ours. He took our place. That's why He died. Jesus also braved the violent beatings of the Roman soldiers, including the whole nation who turned against Him to save all of us while we were still His enemies. St. Mary Magdalene, St. Paul, St. Peter, and St. Longinus were all enemies of Jesus before their conversion. They serve as examples of those whom Jesus died for. In order to prove His love for sinners, we only need to remind ourselves of what Jesus did during the Last Supper. In the Garden of Gethsemane, on Mount Calvary, at His resurrection, and what He intends to do for us in the future. In Jewish Christian anthropology, St. John Paul II said that the heart is not just the human organ, in symbolic theology, the sacred heart of Jesus represents three things. First, the totality of God's love. Second, the totality of the person of Christ, the Redeemer. And lastly, the totality of His interiority, which says how Jesus feels, thinks, and wills. Firstly, the totality of God's love is described in John 15, 13. No greater love a man has than to give up his life for his friend. 
In another passage, we turn to St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verse 8. To convey God's love. While we were still sinners, He already died for us. Because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve, our first parents, the whole humanity must die. Heaven, the place made by God for His obedient servants, was closed. Due to the sin of disobedience manifested by self-will, mankind is headed for hell. God's love, which is not as man loves, is described in first letter of St. John, chapter 4, verse 11. He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus, to ransom us from sin, hell, and death. There was once a 10-year-old boy who, while watching a boat parade of Our Lady of Peña Francia along the river of Naga in the Philippines, saw the boat capsize, sending all its passengers to drown. Screams erupted, but no one attempted to save the drowning people. The boy courageously jumped into the river and saved nine people from drowning. He returned for the tenth time to save the last person stranded in the middle of the river, gripping onto a bamboo pole. However, along the way, the boy's legs cramped, causing him to tragically drown. The Coast Guards eventually retrieved the body of this heroic little boy. At his funeral, the people whom he saved asked for his picture to remind them of the person who had saved their lives. The survivors venerated his picture, reminding them that had it not been for this boy's heroic sacrifice, they would be dead. The boy's picture served as the reminder of their second chance of life. When we see and venerate the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we recall how He rescued us from slavery from Satan and above all from the fires of hell, which could have been our eternal home. We see in the Sacred Heart not just a man, but a God-man who forever will be the object of our eternal adoration in beatific vision in the Kingdom of Heaven as well. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 1 to 5, God took all the afflictions of man. When Jesus died on the cross, He earned all the merits we needed to be saved from hell, sin, and Satan. This grace earned by Jesus is deposited in the church and dispensed to the sacraments. To the sacrament of baptism, we become once again adopted sons of God and heirs of heaven. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 1213, we read, Through baptism we are freed from sin and reborn as sons of God. We become members of Christ, are incorporated into the church and made sharers in her mission. Baptism is the sacrament of regeneration to water in the world. Secondly, the Sacred Heart represents the totality of the person of Christ, the Redeemer. Dying upon the cross, Jesus as the High Priest acted as the Holocaust for the remission of our sins. By His death on the cross, Jesus substituted for us, freeing us from Satan, restoring our good relationship with God the Father and humanity. St. Veronica Giuliani substituted for so many souls who were destined to go to hell. She asked the heart of Jesus to share in His cross so that she could also share the glory of His resurrection. Jesus, symbolized by the Sacred Heart, told St. Veronica at the end of her life, During your twenty years of substitution, not a single soul went to hell. In Romans chapter 5, verse 19, we read, Just as by the disobedience of one man, the first Adam, the many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one man, Christ the new Adam, the many will be constituted just. The Vatican II document Lumen Gentium, paragraph 3, puts it simply, 
By Jesus' obedience, He brought about redemption. Without obedience, the death of Christ would have been a tragedy, not redemption. It was obedience that gave His death its value. This was the reason the sacrifice of Christ was pleasing to the Father, since it was undertaken on behalf of the whole human race. His sacrifice was able to restore mankind to God's friendship that has been lost by sin. Benedict XVI said in Gaudium et Spes, paragraph 22, Each one of us can say with the Apostle, The Son of God loved me and gave Himself for me. Lastly, the Sacred Heart represents the totality of Jesus' interiority, what He feels, thinks, and wills. Jesus feels our miseries. Because of this, He has compassion for us by sympathizing with our weakness and our ailments. Characterized as the divine mercy, the Sacred Heart of Jesus wants us to trust in Him. Even our very feelings so that He can alleviate us from our emotional difficulties, such as the burden of depression. In Matthew 11, 27 to 29, we read, Come to me, all of you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Jesus knows our thoughts. The prophet Isaiah writes in chapter 55, verse 8, God's thoughts are not man's thoughts. God's ways are not man's ways. He understands our compromises in the doctrine, our confusion in our faith, the corruption that it brings in our life, and eventually the collapse of our faith. For this, the Sacred Heart does not right away administer His justice, but instead shows His divine mercy. He waits for us until such a time we understand God better through the promptings of the Holy Spirit and intercession of the Mother of God. Jesus wills our salvation. In John 6, 39, He said, And this is the will of Him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those He has given me, but raise them up at the last day. When Jesus loves us, He is willing to give everything it takes to save us in order to make our human will uniform itself freely to the divine will for our salvation. In the Blessed Sacrament, Jesus continues to mediate for us before His Father in heaven. Countless people who adore the Sacred Heart in the Blessed Sacrament become converted, healed, and delivered from evil. They eventually uniform themselves freely to God's will, found in the Decalogue, the Magisterium, and the Scriptures. St. Maximilian Kolbe was a great devotee of the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Because of his love for Jesus and Mary, he was impelled by the Holy Spirit to make the supreme sacrifice of his life for the sake of the family man, in imitation of Jesus Christ, who substituted for us to free us from the fires of hell. Francisek Gayonishik, a Roman Catholic, lived in Warsaw since 1921. Another wife and two sons. He was a professional soldier who was captured by the Gestapo in Sakopane. He arrived at Auschwitz on September 8, 1940. When a prisoner appeared to have escaped, the subcommandant ordered that 10 other prisoners die by starvation in retaliation. Franciszek Gayonishek was one of those selected at roll call. When Father Maximilian Kolbe heard Gayonishek cry out in agony over the fate of his family, he opened himself instead. Father Kolbe's exact words had been forgotten, but one version records his words as, I'm a Catholic priest from Poland. I would like to take his place because he has a wife and children. The switch was permitted. After all, his cellmates died. Colby was put to death with an injection of carbolic acid. Gayonishek was a guest 
of Pope Paul VI in the Vatican. When Maximilian Kolbe was beatified for his martyrdom on October 17, 1971. In 1972, Time magazine reported that over 150,000 people made a pilgrimage to Auschwitz to honor the anniversary of Maximilian's beatification. One of the first to speak was Gayuneshek, who declared, I want to express my thanks for the gift of life. His wife Helena died in 1977. Gayuneshek was in the Vatican again as a guest of Pope John Paul II when he canonized Maximilian Kolbe on October 10, 1982. No one devoted to the Sacred Heart with its consuming fire of love will remain cold and lukewarm. In the long run, he too will be inflamed to love God and neighbor, culminating in the supreme act of love, fulfilling the scriptures. No greater love a man has than to give up his life for his friends. It may not necessarily happen that we will experience a martyr's death, but it is indeed a fact that it is not until we have true devotion to the sacred heart of Jesus and Mary that we can truly love our neighbors sufficiently. The sacred heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary inflame our hearts with true love. Oftentimes, when we serve others, it is only to give until it hurts. When it is painful, we stop loving. Our love is never satisfactory to the people in our lives. At most, we often possess only a mediocre love. Yet, true love of God and neighbor is eventually acquired by having a true devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Jesus promised to us, tepid souls shall grow fervent. Fervent souls shall quickly mount to high perfection. What I want people to understand about the First Friday, First Saturday Vigil of the Two Hearts is how powerful and tangible, it's palpable. We go to a lot of devotions, but this is more than a devotion. We know it's um, a lifestyle, the communion of reparation, and it's care, confession, adoration, rosary, Eucharist. But when you're at the vigil, every prayer of the church, of the universal church for the last 2,000 years comes together. Comes together in one big, beautiful <laughs> offering to the Lord and to Mother Mary absolutely amazing and awesome. For example, we have four rosaries. We have the brown scapular. We have two masses. We have every prayer that the Catholic Church has. It is amazing, Divine Mercy Chaplet. It goes on and on. I kind of equate it to like um, the ocean where you have the tide, it keeps hitting the ocean, um, the beach, and it never stops. And that's what our prayers are like. They just keep pounding the beach and pounding the beach as we offer this up to the Lord through Mother Mary for the salvation of souls. I've never seen anything like it. My personal experience the first time I went to a vigil was so overwhelming and powerful, I, I wrote up a reflection simply because it was astounding at how tangible and palpable the prayer is. And I want to encourage everyone to go to try it. Go to a vigil. I hear people say, oh, it's so long. Well, um, it's amazing what the Holy Spirit and the, God's grace will do for you and how he works through you and with your fiat, when you give your fiat, say, yes, I will. It's amazing. He keeps you going. He sustains you. And yeah, prayer can be hard. Yeah. Prayer is hard many times. Yeah, but the graces and the blessings that flow through are absolutely amazing. And you'll find yourself, you, you won't be sleepy. You think you will be, you might be a little tired. We all are, life is tired. But truly, um, God's mercy and grace will, will push, push you through. And it's, 
It's beautiful, but it's also critical and imperative in these times. We need the two hearts. We need people to understand why we need the two hearts. And this vigil is a great way to bring this knowledge and understanding and discernment to people and bring it here in their heads and here in their hearts. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, loving Sacred Heart of Jesus, your love and mercy is ever present to us when we adore you in the Blessed Sacrament. You said to St. Margaret Maria Lacoque that your heart is exploding so much for the love of man that you could hardly contain it any longer. You lamented to her this heart that loves man so much and is so little love in return. May we always remember your love for us when you did not spare any part of your body to be lacerated. You did not spare a single drop of your blood in order to save us from satanic influence, which causes us sickness, infestation, and loss of faith. We entrust ourselves totally to you, including our family and our community. We know you will never abandon anyone who has entrusted himself to your sacred heart, because from there flows the inexhaustible source of grace and mercy to alleviate anyone who is willing to be saved. In these end times characterized by the loss of faith and increased diabolical manifestations, deliver us, O Sacred Heart of Jesus. This we ask to the most powerful intercession of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the Chaste Heart of Saint Joseph, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.